at Sheffield tonight, we see the return of the Ipswich Witches as Glasgow took them on in the National League match. The last time in the Knockout Cup, Glasgow broke the Witches' unbeaten spell and we'll be hoping that their own magic continues into tonight's meeting. Now over to Chris. Right, thanks Melanie, and now we've got Jason. Well, Jason, what do you think of the opposition tonight? Um, I think it's going to be a tough one, but um, I think we're going to come out in front. We've already beaten them this season. Uh, will this be another one to add to the pile? Yeah, for sure. So who do you think we should look out for tonight from the opposition? No one. They're all crap. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think Glasgow will fire tonight? I think we'll fire enough to clean them up. No worries. Good stuff then. Thanks a lot, Jason. Yeah, see you later. Well, from one Australian to the other, the Jason didn't think much of the opposition. What about yourself, Shane? Um, well, I don't think they've changed anything from last time they were here. It'll still be a, still going to be a hard match. Uh, they've, they're without um, David Norris, which is a bit easier for us. Um, track's pretty inconsistent tonight because of the rain we've had. We tried to done a pretty good job really to fix it up because I was like here early in the day and it was pretty bad. Um, you know, I see how we go. We should, like, we should win. Uh, you know, but it's not. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a fairly. Hard, it's going to be a hard match. You know, we're going to have to. Every point we make will be earned. So just got to keep going on. Hopefully, we can do it. Will the loss of David Norris really be of an advantage to us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Dave, he's like, he's good for at least ten, like, on every match. Um, you know, Robbie Fuller's taken his place, and how he'll perform at number five, I don't know, because he's not. He's only a reserve, um, you know, so we'll just keep going and uh, we should win it. Well, best of luck, Shane, and have a good one. Thanks a lot. Right, thanks a lot. <coughs> well, Steve, what do you think of the opposition? Uh, your teammates don't think they're up to much. Do they not? No. Well, they're not Cameroons, are they? <laughs> um, I, you know, I think you should treat them like um, maybe uh, in Italy. But I think, I, you know, I think, and treat us like maybe like England. No, no, like don't, Ireland. Don't mention that. Don't mention that. Good one last night. No, we beat them in the beat them in the cup, didn't we? And I think we should be able to do it again tonight. So how many points are Glasgow going to come away with? Pardon? How many points are Glasgow going to come away with? Anything? Oh, you mean <laughs> league points? I thought you meant on the night. Two league points will do. And. Uh, Points on the night, anything over, say, 49, eh? OK, then, that'll do us, Steve. Thanks a lot. Right, cheers. How are conditions looking for tonight's meeting? Uh, muddy. <laughs> I don't know, ask me in about half an hour. I don't know, it looks patchy, can't tell. And have you enjoyed your visits to Shawfield so far? Um, no, not really. No, I had a bad meeting last time in the... I found me scissors in the uh, pairs. Me and my guy didn't have a particularly good day. We had a lot of luck, but um, we couldn't count on it in the end. So, um, and the one before was OK. I got the track record, but it's about all I've done all day, I think. So, just hope for a better one today if the weather stays good. And Glasgow will be looking for a win, so do you think they'll be a team to beat? Um, I don't know. I hope they ride like their football team have been playing in the World Cup, and then we'll be all right. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Good evening from Shawfield and it's straight into heat number one of tonight's National League match between the Glasgow Radio Clyde Tigers and the Ipswich Connells Witches, the early season favourites for the league championship. The weather a bit inclement in Glasgow today, the track looking fairly sticky and we're going straight into the racing rather than have a parade. Uh, although the sun is shining, you never know what's going to happen on a day like this. So. Right on with the action, I don't think anybody will complain about that. The riders in this one from the inside, Chris Louie for Ipswich, Steve Lawson for Glasgow, Shane Parker for the Witches and Charlie McKenna out in gate four for the Tigers. And Chris Louie, the track record holder here, has got a tremendous start and Charlie McKenna went straight into that first corner fence. He's uh, hopped back on again and I think the Witches were making the most of that first corner. We'll see when they come round. Here they are. Chris Louie and Steve Lawson in a dice for second and the track is clearly proving to be a bit of a handful. Louie just managing to hold off Lawson there but definitely struggling as Shane Parker roars ahead. Now Ipswich are missing tonight David Norris 
and he's number four in their averages, so no rider replacement facility for the witches, and that could prove to be a vital factor. But they've certainly made a great start here with Parker and Louis having shaken off, I think, the challenge of Steve Lawson. Charlie McKenna's back on a long way behind. So the witches have done a first-class job here. They've got a few gaps to fill later on, though. Parker spectacularly wheelies home, and the witches take a 5-1 in the opening race. This is heat number two, and that's Jason Lyons on gate number one. The witches have a slightly inexperienced reserve pairing here. That's Darren Fitch in gate two. Phil Jeffrey lines up for the Tigers in gate three, and Colin White on gate four. of the start. Colin White though, an excellent first corner by him. He's challenging Phil Jeffrey for the lead in fact. Should be something of a surprise. He's looking good, Colin White. Phil Jeffrey trying to hold him out, keeping him tight against the fence and Phil Jeffrey leads. Jason Lyons in third but I'm sure he'll challenge. And Colin White under pressure now from the Australian Lions. Uh, I think Jason's going through, he has done. Colin White running out of steam. Uh, I think the track following the rain has caught one or two of the riders out. They're finding it a wee bit difficult, but there's grip there, as Jason Lyons showed there as he came bursting through into second place. So the Tigers may even it up here. Oh, and Jason Lyons has fallen off. And he knocked, uh, accidentally, Colin White against the fence there. But uh, the Witches will get a 3-3 out of that. I don't think there's any point in the Glasgow fans encouraging Jason to carry on there. Because obviously, third place will be awarded. And uh, that will be a 3-all in the end. So the Witches maintain a lead by eight points to four. And Jason, I think, had a malfunction on the last bend there, which caused him to come down. So that's bad luck. This is heat number three, and we've got Alan Moggers, the skipper of the witches, coming into gate number one. Gate two is Sean Courtney for the Tigers. Gate three is Robbie Fuller. And Shane Bowes out on the outside. In recent weeks, this has been perhaps the most impressive Tigers pairing. And Alan Mogridge has been notably unsuccessful in his couple of visits to Shawfield so far this season. A lot of pressure will be on the Ipswich skipper's shoulders, and he hasn't gated well there. Courtney and Bowes quicker to the first corner. And Mogridge, a rather awkward first turn, which sees him in third place. And the Tigers team up there. Not quite sure that they intended to, but that was the way it went. And Mogridge is challenging Bowes. Always a trier, Alan Mogridge. And I think the tricky track conditions are kind of evening things up a bit here. Everybody's struggling a wee bit. Mogridge pressing hard on Bowes. Forceful rider from the back, as you can see. A terrific effort there, but Bowes holds him out once again. Has he gone inside Shane Bowes this time? I think he has. But Sean Courtney's well clear now, and the Tigers take a 4-2. A very interesting race for second. And the score now is Tigers 8 and the Witches 10. Heat number 4. We're just waiting for Jason Lyons to come into gate 2. The man on the inside is Colin White, who looked quite good in heat number 2. That is Phil Jeffrey, in fact, uh, replacing Jason Lyons in blue, is it? Yes. In uh, gate three is Dean standing, and outside Dean is the home star Kenny McKenna. And Billy Wilson wants uh, Dean standing to move over a little bit. 
of when you're dead. And Kenny McKenna gets from the outside. Followed by Dean Standing. Dean Standing's been on the injured list recently. He was injured at Exeter along with David Norris. The man in third place is actually Jason Lyons. The reason I got confused was that Jason, I think, is riding Phil Jeffrey's machine. And he looks rather like Phil. I hope you'll agree with that. Not a very close race. Jason not making his usual spurts and challenging as he would do in his own machine. I think uh, riding Phil's machine is not quite the same thing for him. Kenny McKenna, though, no problems out in front, and I think the Tigers are going to level the scores here. Race very strung out indeed. Kenny not finding the conditions difficult at all. A big win for him. Dean Standing takes second, and the Tigers have leveled the score at 12 points each. Well, Kenny, you managed to show him the way home this time. Aye, that time. Uh, we'll first perform one of these traps, I think. So how do you think it'll go tonight, then? It's, uh, I mean, obviously, Ipswich are here looking for some points, so uh, they're going to be riding as, every bit as hard as we are, and, well, at the end of the day, I don't know. It's anyone's guess, but uh, I'll put my money in Glasgow, I think. Because Glasgow can't afford to lose two more points either? No, no, I, I mean, that's the last thing we need. Uh, we, we did have a dodgy start, obviously, we've lost a few points already through no fault of our own, but uh, we'll keep on going, we'll see how it goes. Best of luck, then, and stick to it. Thanks a lot, Kenny. Thank you. Heat five, and this could be a very important one. The two strongest pairings, perhaps, on either side. Sean Courtney, who had a fast win in his opening ride. On gate one, his partner will be Shane Bowes in gate three. Man from gate two is Shane Parker, who looked very good in heat number one. And we've got Chris Louie out in gate four. So, a very interesting one indeed. And the scores are level at 12 all. Shane Parker, the best new young Australian this season. And it's very tight, Sean Courtney Gates, and that was a bit of a, an untidy one. I fancy an all four restart may well be the decision there. The restart then, all four back. And certainly Sean Courtney got a good start in the original attempt so Sean seems to be in very good form tonight and the Tigers will need that the which is even without David Norris a formidable force Shane Parker has had a good look at his machine to make sure it's okay and off I go again Parker once more and once again I felt that uh, Shane wasn't particularly to blame for that one this race stopped once more and we await the decision once again personally all four would seem a sensible decision again he's excluded Shane Parker this time I think that's pretty unfair does Shane think it was the right decision well, I don't know, referees make their own rules up while they go, but it's a bit hard when you get your hand taken off going into a corner off the handlebars, but that's speedway. Well, here we are for the third time, and no Shane Parker this time. John Lewis made his protest, predictably to no avail. <laughs> Personally, I felt it was unfair, but the referee's the man who's got to stick his neck out and make the decision. So Chris Louis facing a bit of pressure here and he hasn't gated particularly well in either of the two attempts so far. He's away rather awkwardly there as well and the Tigers lead him to the first corner. Chris Louis, the track record holder here, trailing. There's a gap there on the inside, he goes for it hard and he's not through. Shane Bowes leading, Sean Courtney second, and 
Chris Louis with a lot to do. These two Tigers very quick. And they've got to grips with the track conditions now, there's no doubt about that. Sean Courtney's recent form, very good round here. And Shane Bowes as well. I think the gap there now will be very difficult for Chris Louis to close. Into the final lap. He's well back, Louis. And a very good effort by these two young Tigers. A rider of Louis' stature takes quite a bit of beating. But they've done it with a bit to spare, a 5-1 to the Tigers. After all the problems they had starting that race, they've done a great job, and Tigers lead by 17 points to 13. Heat number six, Charlie McKenna fell off in heat number one. Looking for a better ride next to him, Dean Standing goes off gate two, Steve Lawson on gate three, and reserve Darren Fitch out on the outside. Tigers now leading by four. Dean Standing not steady at the start. He gated behind Charlie McKenna, I think, and this time Steve Lawson goes skating to the ground, and uh, the referee will have to make a decision on that one. It was rather, well, not dis too dissimilar to the previous race. All four we have. And that first corner is proving to be quite a problem. What do you think of tonight's meeting so far? Uh, not very good at the moment. Um, missed the start in the first one and sort of got filled in on the first corner. There seems to be some trouble in the first corner. Yeah, apparently it rained hardest one and the track's pretty wet and muddy at the moment, but I think after three races that should sort of clear up. And so it's pitch four points behind now, do you think they can catch up? I don't know, <laughs> I hope so, yeah. Well, um, David Norris is out at the moment, so it makes it a little bit more difficult for us, but... We'll see you later. Thank you. Cheers. Here we go again. Let's hope they all get around the first corner this time. It's easy to imagine it being a similar start again. Three quick gators on the three inside starting positions. start and the Tigers have made it in front. Charlie McKenna and Steve Lawson and Steve finding room outside Charlie. Steve prefers to be out in front. Has a look to make sure that Charlie's okay which he is. And Dean Standing this time has the work to do. The Tigers have just got a 5-1 over Chris Louie and they're in position for another one here. Is Charlie McKenna suffering some bike trouble there? He looked a bit slow down that straight but uh, he's okay there. Tigers form at home very good recently and they're starting to turn on the power now. I'm quite sure they'll want to win this match well enough to rule out any suggestions that the presence of David Norris might have made a difference. They've already beaten the Witches quite comfortably in a cup tie here at Shawfield. And Steve Lawson winning this race by a considerable distance. Starting to look as though Tigers are going to pull clear in this match. Charlie McKenna's going to just about hang on for a second, he has indeed. So it's another 5-1 to the Tigers, 22-14 now the score, the six races gone. Well Steve, a few problems in the first running of that race. Yeah, down on my bottom. Uh, it was just three of us trying to, trying to get in one piece of the track, and I was on the outside, so I got help though. Another handy five points in the bag makes it 22-14. Well, you know, you don't mind falling off as long as you're back in the rear room. And you get a 5-1. <laughs> well, good stuff, and thanks a lot, Steve. My teeth have gone dry. I've got shell all over my teeth. <laughs> Heat number seven, and the witch is a bit up against it at the moment. Kenny McKenna in this one goes off gate number one next to him. Alan Mogridge, a lot of responsibility on him in this race. Gate three, it will be Jason Lyons, back in his own machine. And Robbie Fuller, the man on the outside, who would have to ride above himself to contribute here. Tigers have built up an eight-point lead. Ipswich could have used a tactical substitute here. They choose not to. I think they're going to have several opportunities to make changes. Both the 
Tigers, Robbie Fuller is the Witches Rider in contention. Kenny McKenna pulls clear of him. And Jason Lyons is at the back this time. Fuller and Moggridge in second and third. And if they can stay there, that will indicate John Lewis' decision not to make a change here. But Jason Lyons has Robbie Fuller in his sights. An exceptionally wide corner there by Jason, but I'm sure he'll be challenging shortly. Here he comes. Oh dear. Oh, 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 oh. Now, Jason came down there. I think he'll be unhappy about that because Robbie Fuller did lose control in front of him. But I think the referee's saying it's just one of those things. And on we go. So, Witches might be quite happy with this race. Alan Moggridge, in fact, is putting Kenny McKenna under tremendous pressure at the front. Really powering inside the Tiger skipper there. Kenny, I think, just for the advantage. Moggridge going for a big blast round the outside on the last corner. Kenny wins it. And he really had to work hard there. A fine ride by Alan Moggridge. And Robbie Fuller getting the point in the end. So a 3-0 there. 25-17 the score. Well, glad we seem to off to a good start. Uh, yeah, we're off to a good start so far. As long as we can keep it going, we'll be all right. And your partnership with Shane seems to be proving quite successful. It is pretty successful, yeah. Um, if both of us can keep making the starts, we'll be all right. And Glasgow hold on to the lead? I hope so. so uh, Ipswich are riding pretty good. Moggridge and Parker are going well, so we'll have to keep beating them. OK, thank you. Thank you. Gate number eight, there's Phil Jeffrey on the inside gate. And he doesn't look like Jason Lyons at all, does he? In gate two, we will have tactical substitute Alan Moggridge. Impressive in the previous race, and this is obviously a good time to use him. Gate three will be Charlie McKenna, and on the man on the outside, Shane Parker. So, which is strongly represented here, trying to get back into this match, facing an eight-point deficit at the moment. by the Tigers if they could withstand this tactical substitute change by the Witches. Shane Parker's coming up to challenge on the outside. I think he's gone round Phil Jeffrey. He has indeed. But the Witches with still all the work to do and Parker's too wide there. Phil Jeffrey's come back under him into second. Really tight going into that third corner. Now Alan Moggridge comes through powerfully and he's going to come down there I think. No he hasn't. But he's balked his partner unfortunately. Phil Jeffrey held on bravely there, as he often does, he's a hard man to shift. Alan Moggridge got that corner wrong, and not only put himself out of contention, but also balked his partner. So that was a, an unwise move, really, by Alan. He's coming back at Phil Jeffrey now. The Tiger's looking good here. Shane Parker's right out of it, and Phil Jeffrey's still hanging on in second place. Oh, and Moggridge has fallen off. Well, Alan takes a few tumbles. He tries very hard, but down he came there. And the Tigers have not merely withstood the tactical substitute, they've taken a 5-1 and stretched their lead to 12 points. They lead by 30 points to 18 now. Charlie McKenna won the race, but I think a particularly good ride by Phil Jeffrey in second place. Well, Phil, uh, tough and entertaining, that little race. Yeah, well, I made a good start, you know, and just got the grip between my teeth and... Just try to keep them going, you know, and managed to hold them off. The important thing there was you kept your cool. Uh, <laughs> I feel a bit, a bit better tonight than what I have been. Hope I can just keep improving on it, you know. You're back on the scoring front as well. Ah, uh, it's first win, of, first win all season tonight. First time I've won a race all season. Oh, well, <laughs> congratulations. So is there another couple coming again tonight? Well, hope so, aye. Uh, yep. So how's the track helping? It's actually uh, quite grippy, you know, on the inside, so it, you know, I quite like that, so it helps a little bit. But, uh, quite enjoying it. Good stuff, Well, we'll let you get back and get prepared for the next one, and let's hope for another win, Phil. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ruth. Thanking you. Well, Charlie, a few problems in your first race. It was about to get into the first corner, and with me being off of gate four, when everybody started to move, I was the last one to get to get dumped, and, and down I went. But, um, since then, 
things are starting to look a bit better. The last one was a peach to win. Cracker to get a 5-1 in Heat 8 special when they slipped in Mogo as a as attack sub. I mean, that's him used now. So that's one of the trump cards gone? Well, it's one of them. They've got, they're not short of them right enough. And, and, you know, with all due respect to Ipswich, when it comes to tag subs, they've got plenty of riders to call on. Um, certainly that's one down. So I'm maybe... Well, I'm not sure if we're looking... They'll put another one out in Heat um, 14. They'll use one there, and uh, I'm not sure where else. Hopefully I won't get it in my next race. Right, we'll look out for that one in Heat 14, and thanks okay. a lot, Charlie. Yeah. Heat number nine, and we've got another tactical change by the witches here. Shane Parker coming in this time, so it's the same pairing as in the previous race. Messrs Mogridge and Parker, and they're facing the Tigers pairing of Shane Bowes and Sean Courtney. From the inside, it's Mogridge, Bowes, Parker, and Courtney. And Bowes and Courtney with nine points from their two previous rides together. Alan Mogridge is gated. That's an unusual situation for Alan. He's not the best of starters. He's gone to the front here, Sean Courtney on his tail, and Shane Parker in third place. So this time the Tigers with the fighting from the back to do. And Sean Courtney almost through there. Brilliant riding by Courtney. Quite forceful, but quite fair. And he's gone to the front, and Sean Courtney in outstanding form. He's left a wee gap there, and Alan Mogridge back through again. Tremendous tussle for the lead. Sean Courtney will nip inside here. Shane Bowes is challenging Shane Parker hard. And Alan Mogridge is stopped. Well, that's an unfortunate finish to a tremendous race there. Shane Parker's hung on ahead of Shane Bowes. He's now in second, of course. He's not now. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, uh, Shane Parker got himself into trouble there. And I think this might be a 5-0. No, we're on the last bend, of course, I beg your pardon. Five points to the Tigers for sure. And uh, Alan Mogridge is... And Shane Bose has been excluded there. Well, I don't agree with that, to be quite honest. And uh, apologies to referee Will Hunter, but I'm finding his decisions a bit difficult to understand tonight. I do think that Shane Parker made the mistake there, and Shane Bose simply was riding inside him. So that, in the end, I suppose, will be a 3 all, and that makes the score 33-21. If there's any change to that, we'll let you know. Just before the start of Heat 10, I changed the result of Heat 9, which was actually stopped, and uh, Dean Standing's efforts to push home for the point were to no avail because he wasn't under power at the time of the stoppage. So very bad luck to Dean. It was a 3-2 to Glasgow, who now lead by 33 points to 20. And apologies once again for the inexcusable mistake in failing to recognise Dean's standing. I hope that didn't spoil enjoyment of what had been a good race up to the point that Dean's standing stopped. So this is heat 10. We'll try and get the riders right this time. Robbie Fuller going off gate number one. Charlie McKenna on gate two. That is indeed Alan Mogridge this time on gate three, looking very much like Dean standing. And Steve Lawson roaring from gate number four. Robbie Fuller's got a good start. He's that's his second good start, but the Tigers have sandwiched him and gone to the front on the first corner. Lawson leads from McKenna with Alan Mogridge battling through into third place and almost alongside Charlie McKenna. And the Tigers are getting better than the Witches tonight. That's the crucial factor. We've seen the Witches trying very hard to come from the back, but have really not been able to overcome their disadvantage at the first corner. Mogger is very wide there, nearly off, and that allows Charlie McKenna to pull away in second place. And this is turning into a very strong display indeed by Glasgow, who are a formidable force at home. Charlie doesn't seem all that fast, but he's so tenacious. Alan Mogridge is right there with him on the last corner. It's going to be close. I think Charlie's going to get second, though. He does buy a wheel. A terrific race for second, but a 5-1 to the Tigers once again, and they're storming away now. They lead by 38 points to 21. Steve Lawson, of course, the race winner once again. Well, Bert, what's it like talking to the Glasgow crowd? Oh, the Glasgow people um, react 
very, very well. I, I, I feel um, they're really quite responsive. Um, I've been to various other tracks, particularly in the Midlands, where it's a very serious business. I think that Speedway Whale, the riders take chances and so on, should really be a fun event. And I, I think that they all try so very hard. And I really enjoy not only seeing the Tiger, but seeing all the visiting riders. And what was it like being the announcer at the, at the Pairs meeting? Uh, well, it was a bit uh, nerve tingling, but it's... I, well, I don't know whether you know or not, but I work in cabaret also, and I do variety shows, and I remember someone, some old artist telling me many years ago that if you don't get excited before a show, there's absolutely no use going on, unless you get a tingle up the back of your spine uh, before you go on, then there's no use in doing it. OK, thank you. That was great, thanks very much. Heat 11, and the witch is with an awful lot to do now, probably too much. They've got a strong pairing out here though, Shane Parker on gate one and Chris Louie in gate three. In between them, Kenny McKenna with two wins under his belt for the Tigers and the man on the outside gate, Phil Jeffrey, who is also unbeaten, five paid six from two rides and Phil's looked very impressive so far. 17 points the gap, 38-21, surely too much for the witches to surmount. when he's on song, Kenny McKenna. He's away once again. Phil Jeffrey's unbeaten run is in jeopardy here. He's at the back. Kenny McKenna, anchor man once again for the Tigers. The man who almost always picks up the three points. Put the disappointment of the National League pairs behind him. He didn't do well at all in that. Chris Lewis getting close here. Into the final lap. A fast man is Chris. Kenny McKenna's fan club secretary Darren Kelsall is here tonight. He'll be delighted with Kenny's form as he powers into the final corner there. And he hasn't really let Chris Lewis put in a challenge. A good three points for Kenny. Hibbert share the race. Phil Jeffrey couldn't pick anything up that time. 41-24, the score then in favour of Glasgow. This is heat 12. Steve Lawson is going off the inside gate here. Robbie Fuller in gate 2, Sean Courtney in gate 3, and Sean is unbeaten at this stage. And the man on the outside, get him right this time, it's Dean Standing. Tiger still with a 17-point advantage, and I think they can breathe fairly easily, but plenty of interest still to come. We've had some very good racing indeed tonight. Tiger's in tremendous form. Only Jason Lyons hasn't won a race so far for the Tigers. Both the Tigers in this race have won two apiece. And what a start by the two Tigers. Tremendous. Lawson and Courtney to the first corner. Robbie Fuller's third. I think perhaps Dean Standing might come past him. He's taking his time about it. And the Tigers roaring clear. And I think they're going to bury all suggestions that the absence of David Norris has made any difference. Dean Standing's well back, and I suspect that perhaps his mechanical defect in the previous race is carrying on here, and uh, he may be on a borrowed machine. So Sean Courtney is going to maintain his unbeaten record, barring accidents. And a maximum against the title favourites would be a, a tremendous achievement for Sean, who's having a very good season indeed. Steve Lawson keeping a weather eye open for him, leading the way once again. After that 5-1 in the opening race, Steve hasn't had any real problems. So there we go, a comfortable 5-1. Bobby Fuller takes the third place point and 
Tigers have stretched their lead to 46-25 and they're home and dry now, even mathematically Ipswich can't catch them. Heat 13, Kenny McKenna, another Tiger on a maximum there in gate 3, his partner Shane Bowes off the inside. Chris Louie goes from gate number 2 and Alan Mogridge hiding behind the pillar. to find a way down the inside but he's dropped to the back Alan Mogridge is challenging on the outside powerful riding by Mogridge has it taken into, into second place no Bose has fought back it's very tight for second and Mogridge is way wide there and Chris Lewis come into third place and once again the Tigers storming away for a 5-1 and the witches are taking a pasting here they haven't had a night like this for a long time and how Tigers must wish that this was the second leg of the cup tie. Chris Louie now taking up a challenge on Shane Bowes. One thing you can say about the Witches, they're not giving up even though they're well behind. And Chris Louie almost finding a way through there. Brilliant riding by Chris Louie. Can he pass Shane Bowes here? Into that third corner, Bowes shows the extra determination. Who's going to get it? I think it's going to be Bowes. Once again, the Tigers, tremendous determination, and Bose takes a great second place there. We're getting some very good racing in spite of the wide scores. Tigers now on 51, and the Witches on 26. Well, Shane, Chris seemed to give you a bit of fright there. Yeah, I didn't, didn't expect it to be a, like a very easy race, but, you know, you can't, on the inside of me, on this corner, um, made a little, little bit of a mistake, and uh, he can't inside of me. I just, and he can't inside of me down the straight. You know, just went in that like, third corner, just flat stick, and then, and I uh, just that's what you know I could do. And I went in flat stick, and it paid off. And we got a five-one, so did the job. Then heat nine, you were looking for a paid win as well. What happened? Um, well, first I was last, then I standing stop. And um, I was getting a good run on Parker, and I was quicker than him. And I was on the outside, and then like cutting back and that. And then uh, I was on this is turn one and two, and I come in like flat out right on the, right on the inside of the line. I sort of showed him your wheel a bit, and he sort of went a bit wide. So I got underneath him, and then I think I don't, I'm not sure, but he must, I think he pulled a little bit of a locker, or tried to turn back on me, or what he did, but you know, he was right out, I couldn't see him, you know, and he must have just like, ran me back wheel or something, I'm not too sure. So I think that's, you know, and then the referee excluded me. But I don't really think that I should have been excluded. This is heat 14, and still the witches are trying. They've got Chris Louie in as a tactical substitute here. He goes off the inside gate. He hasn't won a race yet, and that's an unusual situation for Chris. Gate 2 is Charlie McKenna. Gate 3 is Shane Parker. And Jason Lyons out on gate 4. So I think the Tigers fans will be appreciative of the fact that the Witches have given it everything right to the end here. That's what make them, makes them the good side they are. Chris Louis has gated this time. The Tigers in second and third, straining to get at him. And Shane Parker got pushed to the rear in quite a rough first corner. Jason Lyons has only got one point so far tonight. That was very unusual for him. He's going to pick up some more here. And he's looking to produce one of his stormers. Chris Louie lifts a bit there, but he hangs on. And the Witches certainly don't become a poor side just because they're getting hammered here. The Tigers are in great form. Uh, which is still strong contenders for the National League title. Shane Parker's pressing Charlie McKinnon at the rear. Trying to get inside Charlie there. And he's done it, I think. He didn't leave Charlie much room there. Charlie won't like that. Parker takes the third place and which is 
win the heat 4-2 and that's the first one since heat one that they've won so 53-30 now the score with just a couple of races left well Neil I take it I'm speaking to a happy man tonight yes you got to believe it Chris I said all along about a different ball game in the league match you know because in the KL Cup they come up here to contain us but I thought to be honest I'm a bit disappointed in that switch tonight but in saying that, our boys aren't really giving them a chance to ride. You know, the boys are riding superbly tonight. Superb, you know. You happy with the way they're riding as a team? Yeah, that's that's the main thing, I think, Chris. They are riding as a team, you know what I mean? Even at Stoke last week, I know we went down by four points. But the boys rode very, very well. Um, you know, and it, it's funny, really. I mean, it all started back here a few weeks ago when, when Stevie was um, rested. Stevie, remember, rested, not dropped, rested. <laughs> the non-going thing. No, I mean, they're riding as a team. They're riding well. Everyone's helping each other. I mean, Charlie McKenna came off in his first one. Came straight in the pits and he was helping Jason after Jason had problems. Terrific stuff. You know, I'm delighted. An absence that we have seen for a while is Martin. The, the rumours, I, and I say rumours, are that he has not paid a fine. Have the promotion end to say on this? That's a new one on me. Um, that's not true. I know that he was fined, certainly, for um, the, an incident a couple of weeks back. That fine was paid and given to the referee the following week. That's definitely not the case. There's no problems at all with Martin, they'll be out in the second half tonight and I know that he is definitely going on tour with the team uh, in July as an integral member of the team. Now, here's another rumour. Are we signing another uh, rider to start up a football team? Um, there is a lot of rumours in that. We're starting up a female football team. That is correct. I have volunteered to be the Masseur. Masseurs. Whatever it is. You know, the one that does the rumour. Yeah, that's true, Chris. The penultimate race and Kenny McKenna's on a max here. He's won four and he's got gate one here, so he must be odds on the 15 point maximum. Dean standing in gate two will provide some opposition. In gate three, we'll have Shane Bowes in a moment. And Robbie Fuller out on the outside. There's Shane. Tigers might well top 60 here. That was their target. 61 to win was their target in the second leg of the cup tie here. They were within sight of that in this match, although David Norris, of course, rode in the cup tie. It's certainly not been a bad match. In spite of the score, there's been plenty of good racing, quite a bit of incident. And plenty for the Tigers fans to celebrate, including that Tremendous start by their two riders in this one, McKenna and Bowes. Kenny has a look and sees that Shane Bowes there. Don't, see, don't tell me Kenny McKenna's going to do some team riding. Well, a new string to his bow. Kenny on the inside, Shane out a bit, and Dean standing fairly well back. of it and Kenny doesn't hang around to wait and see what's going to happen. <laughs> Still not really under any pressure. Into the final lap. Well that's two laps of team riding Kenny McKenna's done there. I wonder if he enjoyed it. He can certainly see that there's no danger to Shane Bowe's second place and another 5-1 here for the Radio Clyde Tigers. What a night they're having. Kenny McKenna, 15 point maximum. Tigers now on 58, Ipswich on 31. been an enjoyable fixture. That's Chris Louis, who just won a race a couple of heats ago. He's on gate one again. Next to him, it's Sean Courtney, who's the second Tiger looking for a maximum tonight. It would be a paid one in the case of Sean. Gate three there is Alan Mogridge, and on the outside, Steve Lawson. So Tiger strongly represented to the end, which has started with a 5-1, remember? That was Chris Louis and Shane Parker. Since then, it's been Tigers all the way. And they have a 27-point advantage as they go into the final race here. Just a heart back to that 
cup tie, if this was the cup tie, Tigers would be looking to score two points in this race to go through an aggregate. But that's not relevant here, they've got the league points. Sean Courtney looking for his maximum, that's the main event perhaps in this race. Chris Louis gated well there, but Sean Courtney has slipped past him. Meanwhile, Steve Lawson's gone to the front and it's Alan Mogridge that's in second place. So Sean Courtney has to pass Alan Mogridge to get a memorable paid maximum. Chris Louis has been pushed right to the back. And Alan Mogridge is very wide there. Here comes Sean Courtney, almost through. Tigers fans roaring him on. Alan Mogridge, erratic. But he's hanging on to second place and Chris Louis coming back into contention as well. Mogridge trying to hold the inside, which is where Sean Courtney is attacking him. That's the line. Sean once again. Right there, Mogridge forces back into second place again. Terrific race. We've had so many of them tonight. I think Alan Mogridge is going to get the second. Steve Lawson wins it. Sean Courtney misses his paid maximum by just under a bike length. A great performance nevertheless. And the Tigers take a 4-2 in the last race and win the match by 62 points to 33. It's been an outstanding fixture, I thought. In spite of the big score, some terrific racing and a really superb performance by the Radio Clyde Tigers. Well, Sean, how does it feel to be man of the match? Uh, it feels good to be man of the match. Um, I think I did deserve to get man of the match. Well, me or Kenny. All the lads rode well, but um, would have been nice to get a paid win in the last one to get a maximum, but I'm happy with the way things are going. And a great, a great team performance as well. Very good team performance uh, all the way down to number seven. Phil had a good ride against Shane Parker and Mogridge, so hopefully Phil can get going and everybody else can keep going the way they are. And do you think Glasgow's good form can continue? Oh, definitely. Um, all we need is a couple of way wins, which we're capable of doing, and uh, we'll be back up there again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, Charlie, how did you enjoy tonight's meeting? I enjoyed three of the races. That's the ones that wins are paid wins, and I enjoyed them. And uh, I had two duffers. But, but there's more. It was good. It was good to win the match. What happened in the first race? I spoke to Christopher early and I'll tell you just the same. <laughs> I got a bit tight into the first corner, me being on the outside, I was the last one to go. And there was nobody on the outside of me to hold me up. So down I went. Three points right off the scorecard. Bad way to start. And St Glasgow can win the rest of their meeting? At home. Hopefully. If we don't win them all, um, we should get our behinds kicked. I mean, that's us dispatched, that's us twice. They've only been beaten three times this year, um, twice at Glasgow, and um, they get beaten last week or the week before at, uh, at Exeter, but for Glasgow to do them twice... What about away meeting? There's two or three we should win at. I'm not going <laughs> If I don't mention them, then nobody will know <laughs> what ones I'm talking about, but uh, there's two or three we should win at. Okay. Um, you're awful keen to pull that away. <laughs> do you want an interview or not? <laughs> There's two or three we should win at, um, and that's going to try and, and take us off the kind of, you know the bottom of the league. I think we're the third from the bottom just now. Come the end of the season, by the time we win all our home matches, touch wood, and uh, two or three away matches, we're not going to be far away. Mid-table plus, which isn't bad considering the bad start we had. OK, thank you. You can take it away now if you want. <laughs> well, what about that result, Steve? Yeah, we certainly beat them, didn't we? We made them look like Cameroons, didn't we? Although, if they beat England, oh, it'd, be, it'd be sad if they beat England. No, nah, we beat them fair and square. Can't complain. Unfortunately, uh, you missed out on your maximum. Well, I, I did it in my first race. That's the best way to do it, isn't it? Drop your points early on, then the pressure's off then. 
I would, I would have hit, to, hit it to a four wings and 30 mil last ride. That would have been a stinker. Still, we beat them, that's the main thing. The team seems to be firing again. How long is it going to last? How long is it going to last? <laughs> <laughs> as long as possible, I hope. No, I, um, yeah, it, it seems to be going well. Uh, Sean and uh, Shane look well together. They're, they're a nice pairing. Uh, sometimes Charlie and me, we tend to get in each other's way a little bit, but uh, we can work on that and we'll be all right. So is this run going to see us climb up the league? Oh yeah, you bet. I mean, we, we nearly won at Stoke there, didn't we? Took them to a last tee. And, uh, I mean, they're strong on the home track, so I think I'm feeling good now, the way things are going just now. So another couple of points away from home and we should be sort of three quarters away up the league. We'll be well, happy with that. That, that'll, that'll cancel out our uh, home defeats, won't it? Um, and then we're, then we're back to square one then. We need to start winning some more. We're, you know, we're, we've done the damage early on to, to win the league, so we can forget about that. It's just, you know, we've got to try and salvage something. We're out of the cup. We're in the four-team tournament. We didn't do so good in the pairs. Uh, um, what else? That's about it. Oh, three-team tournament, the Scottish three-team tournament. We're winning that, so we've got to win that. We're leading that at the moment. Uh, anything else? <laughs> well, thank you very much, then. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, Christopher. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's good to see you back on bottom. Thank you. Oh. oh, it was a, it was a good meeting for Glasgow. Done well, you know, we've done well tonight. Great meeting. How's your problems tonight? Uh, not too bad. Better than what I've been doing. A lot better than what I've been doing. It's uh, cause I've been struggling, like been struggling badly, and I feel a little bit better after tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what? what <laughs> What did you think of my performance? Yeah. Um, I think number two, you were very good there. What did you think of the Glasgow performance? Glasgow was that good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for the areas of Clay Tigers.